My name is Nicole Grenan. I'm a research associate and public archaeologist with the Florida Public Archaeology Network. And we're here in the Naval Live Oaks area of Gulf Islands National Seashore today to monitor a rather large site that's eroding into Pensacola Bay. And so the site we're visiting today is uh, one of our, our larger sites that's along Pensacola Bay in the Gulf Islands National Seashore area. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk along the coastline see if we can spot any erosion um, and usually we're, we're aware of the erosion because we see material culture artifacts coming down onto the beach uh, falling out of the cliffs that are caused by erosion from waves and flooding. And so what we're going to do while we're out here is we're also going to map how the shoreline has changed over time. So we're going to take our GPS unit, we're going to walk along the shoreline and take points every so often so that we can see how much that erosion has really affected the coastline in this area. And we can compare that to historical maps and other satellite data from through the years. The coastlines of Florida and Pensacola Bay are plagued by major storms and hurricanes every year. And one of the things that we see as a result of these storms that are increasingly more frequent and strong as time goes on and as climate change impacts them, we see a lot of erosion along our coastlines. So in September of 2020, Hurricane Sally hit the Pensacola area pretty strong and we saw not only damage to a lot of our infrastructure and our roads and bridges in the area, but also a lot of our beaches were affected by major erosion. And when we think about erosion on beaches, normally we think of our beaches along the Gulf of Mexico or along the Atlantic Ocean. Um, but a lot of our interior beaches, ones that are along Pensacola Bay or in Santa Rosa Sound, were also really affected by Hurricane Sally. I'm Dr. Ramy Goujon. I'm a professor of anthropology in the Department of Anthropology at the University of West Florida. This site's known as the Butcher Pen Mound Complex. It was recorded uh, for the first time in the late 60s, early 70s. It's clearly known about for a long time by the locals. Some professional excavations done on it uh, in the early 1980s and then again by our team in 2019. This is a multi-mound site, probably had a habitation area associated with it. And it dates primarily to the woodland period um, although it has some earlier archaic components, and then, of, of more interest to me, a later Mississippian occupation. Um, and it's quite possible that people during the early proto-historic era, you know, the early during early contact period, were there too. The site has been investigated several times professionally. Florida State University had a field school there in the early 1980s, and we had a field school there in 2019. We were interested in seeing basically what is left of parts of that site along the bluff edge given that it was reported in the early 80s that erosion had already taken out much of one of the mounds. Our work in 2019 seemed to confirm that this mound C uh, was largely gone. And then um, our visit today uh, shows that this erosion is ongoing and, and really eating away at the, the bluff edge of the site. What we've been targeting, primarily the shell deposits, because the preservation of the cultural materials in them is a lot better. The shell uh, sort of stabilizes the soil, changes the acidity levels of the soil, and organic stuff like animal bone um, is, is better preserved. As we saw today, also the shell tempered sherds from the Mississippian period are better preserved. The shell tempering doesn't leach out of the sherds when they are themselves encased in uh, oyster shell or conch shell middens. Level of erosion just from the trees that have tipped off the edge of that bluff was pretty appalling. It exposed a couple of new pockets of shell and uh, the materials that were in them have washed down onto the, the bluff edge. We didn't see too much in the way of animal bone today, which was good, but you know, any loss of that, that data from its original context is just uh, data lost. It's information that we, we really can't put back together. We can identify the specific types of sherds that are down on the beach, but without knowing where they were and where they were in association with other sherds, um, it's really hard to tell much about what was happening on the site at the times that it was occupied. But you're kind of fighting Mother Nature. Weather caused or sea level rise uh, weather events are very hard to mitigate against. You can try to put sea walls or uh, living shorelines to temporarily stabilize them and hope that um, it's enough for a period of time. But really, I think what we're seeing um, at Butcher Pen is gradual, you know, kind of punctuated, uh, occasionally dramatic loss of a really important Native American site on 
Pensacola Bay. Our field schools on uh, Butcher Pen or any other part of Naval Live Oaks, we first have to turn in a research permit where we spell out exactly the kinds of questions that we're asking, the methods that we're going to use to answer those questions, and a list of the personnel who are going to be involved. They want to make sure that the people who are doing any kind of investigative work out here are uh, properly trained, do that work, and have a history of being able to produce the, the kinds of reports and articles and things that uh, document all of that, that research. So our advice is always just to uh, leave it be. If you're not a member of HMS and participating in that Heritage Monitoring Scouts program, um, leave it where it is. Um, obviously, if it's rolling around in the surf, you know it's always very tempting to pick this stuff up. But as you're on federal property, you're technically looting the site. We wouldn't want people coming out here and digging up the plants to put them in their front yards or uh, capturing you know, gopher tortoises to, to take home for the kids. We also don't want them taking home the artifacts. So what looks like a potentially lost or out of place artifact can still give us some information and it's best if you just leave it in place. Liquor bottle. That's modern, not, not old.